you know, a big welcome to everybody, and uh, thank you very much for your time coming today, um, especially of those who, who kindly agreed, under some pressure sometimes, to act as table leads. That's much appreciated. The, the key aim of today is to just listen to different perspectives. You know, we're very aware, uh, working with the, um, our, our, our members from the refugee community organisations, that we need to be aware of perspectives of everybody, the realities of everybody, the agendas of everybody, to work out practically how to, how to fit in and how to progress this, this issue. So your, your perspective, your experience, your expertise is really valuable. Um, I want to thank, uh, firstly, uh, Panganai, Panganai Swatva here who is um, now a trustee of the Refugee Forum, but it was, the Skill Project is his initiative, it was his idea. And uh, he's responsible for the um, photographic <coughs> exhibition, and we've got an example of that on the stage behind. What happened today in this workshop, um, and what has happened previously, it has really gone beyond my, my expectations. Uh, when this thing started, it was just my like an, an individual uh, um, artist work uh, for my university project. But now it has grown so much, and I'm glad this has happened today with people from the government representatives, with people from Job Center Plus, um, from different companies, organizations, and the discussions were so fruitful, um, and we hope to see some good results coming out of this workshop. I'm here today because obviously we want to uh, understand how the um, RRF uh, provision can actually be integrated into the work programme and today's been an absolute eye-opener for me to understand uh, the types of people that are out there, the, the entrepreneurs that are out there that we can definitely fit into um, the enterprise section and of course the regular provision as well. I dare to say this to refugee communities because Georgina and others will know I have a long track record as a friend and supporter of refugee communities and refugee community organisations, that we will prosper best as refugee communities, or you will prosper, I'm not a refugee, if, if you can move out of and not let your members encourage a victim kind of mentality. Actually, I just want to mention that Skilled itself uh, grew out of um, some work we've been doing since 2008 with the Northern TUC and the Regional Commission, which was on the um, Let Us Work campaign, which is a national campaign run by the Refugee Council and the TUC, and which we ran in this region. The big things that I learned from today was, it reinforced for me that refugees are such an asset to the North East, as we've been talking about. They are a a bit of a secret, really, the skills and capacities that they have that could add value to our economy as well as the social infrastructure of the Northeast. And it's just a case of somehow translating and explaining that to employers and others. Migrants in this country, people who do come, they flee their countries, whatever. African leaders are facing a challenge today. They are losing that, what is called brain drain. They're losing their qualified people, whatever, who could work for them. And now they lose about four billion US dollars every year because of that, because they need to get some technical assistance. But what are we doing with those people who are coming here? There is a brain drain. Here should be a brain gain. It's just important to point out that not every agency in every contractual situation has the flexibility that the Science City, the second example that Julie has. It's been really interesting. We've, um, I've come and talked a bit about work placements and my experience of organising work placements for refugees. Um, and there's been a lot of people with, from different backgrounds who've contributed to that, so I think it's been really great. Yeah. What we can only offer them at this point okay. is call off provision because obviously with the work programme we don't know, we're working on indicative figures at the moment, we don't actually know what those figures are coming through but we have engaged with the likes of JET okay. and we've engaged with some other uh, smaller local organisations, organic organisations in different areas. Because we are looking at the evidence that has been collected from the two workshops and from, from the exhibitions that we have been doing. Hopefully, there will be consequences that come from those workshops. So I wouldn't say uh, work is ending here because this was the last workshop. No, I think a new strategy will be developed based on the findings of these workshops and the experience of for the other work that we have been doing in relation to uh, the skilled project. 
I, I hope I kind of inferred that in that I think refugees are hugely adding value and adding richness in every sense, social richness and economic richness uh, to the Northeast. And um, the sooner people like me and others really realize that, uh, the better. Um, there are studies that show that diverse places, diverse cities are the ones that prosper best internationally. And at a local level, there are studies that show that employers that are absolutely background blind to who they employ, and they only employ them for the quality of their skills, no other factors, are the most successful employers. And some of the top international companies, software companies and so on, show that. They employ otherwise people you might think, why on earth did you employ that person, whatever but it's because they're a brilliant software programmer or a brilliant this or a brilliant that. So I think employers have got to be background blind and skills focused, and that's, that's the future for the Northeast and so on.